Here's everything you need to know about Andor's Mon Mothma. This is Nerdist Now. We're now four episodes into Andor, and not to editorialize too much on this, but it is easily one of the best Star Wars stories to date. A slow burn political thriller that expands on the world beyond the usual five or six planets and character dynamics we've come to expect in Star Wars. And with the new series comes new characters like Luthen, Bix, Marva, Vetch, and of course, B. We love that guy. He kind of sounds like Conky from Pee Wee's Playhouse. Jesse came back. Because. <laughs> but today we're talking about a character whose reach extends far across the Star Wars timeline, both before and after Andor, and that's Mon Mothma. We'll have a deep dive for episode four up later today, but in this video, we're going to be diving into the backstory of the rebel leader and how she fits into the Star Wars timeline. But if you want to read more about her, Eric Diaz has you covered over on Nerdist.com. And if you're the 1% of people who want to experience Andor without knowing anything else about Star Wars, now's your chance to leave, I guess. Godspeed, brave soul. What have you been doing? Very nice to see you. Whoa. Still here? We thought you would be. The character Mon Mothma first appeared on screen in Return of the Jedi for barely more than a minute to brief the Rebel fleet before the Battle of Endor. Originally played by Caroline Blackiston, not only did Moth Mon Man deliver the famous and now somewhat confusing line about how many Bothans died to bring us this information, she gave a face and a voice to Rebel Alliance leadership. Since the Ewok celebrations at the end of episode six, my Moth Mother has appeared as a prominent character in many Star Wars stories, now adding Andor to her resume. But where exactly did she she come from. The Mothman Prophecies was born on the planet Chandrala in the year 46 BBY, or before the Battle of Yavin, if you're nasty. Her dad was an Arbiter General in the Galactic Republic, and her mother was a governor. By age 14, she had joined the Republic's Galactic Senate, becoming one of the youngest senators, along with future Queen of Naboo, Padme Amidala, she of the cool hair. The two of them, as well as Bail Organa, were a part of a Loyalist Committee, a group of senators dedicated to preserving the ideals of the Republic. After the Clone Wars broke out between the newly formed Grand Army of the Republic and the Droid Army of the Separatist Alliance, Moth Monster Man remained a member of the Loyalist Committee, but became an outspoken opponent of the war with the Separatists. M.M., along with friends and allies like Padme and Anaconda Far, came to fear that the Republic's push to defeat the Separatists made it blind to the damage the war would wreak on the Republic. Despite the opposition to the Separatist movement, they fiercely opposed the war, hoping to end it through diplomacy, which didn't go too well for Senator Farr in Clone Wars. Did anything else happen during that time? Misa proposed that the Senate give immediately emergency powers to the Supreme Chancellor. In the years following Order 66, Mothma remained as part of the new Imperial Senate, secretly working against them from within, like we're seeing now that she's finally popped up on Andor. This is definitely a time in Mon Mothra's life we've never seen before, rubbing elbows with the elite, hosting parties with her layabout husband, and working with Luthen as they start to help build the rebellion. Timeline-wise, we know that both Andor and Rebels take place five years before the Battle of Yavin, and we're meeting Mothma while she's keeping a low profile, but that probably won't be for much longer. In season three, Star Wars Rebels, we saw Mon Mothma calling out Emperor Palpatine as a coward and murderer for the Gorman Massacre. So either word of the massacre might not have reached Mothma's ears yet, or more likely she's biding her time. Because we know as soon as she makes her brave speech against the Emperor, she's labeled a traitor and hits the road with the help of Leia and the crew of the Ghost to stay one step ahead of the Empire. It's from the Bridge of the Ghost where she delivers her speech resigning from the Senate and calls for the revolutionary factions across the galaxy to join the Rebellion. We know the Andor story will take place over two seasons, and with another eight episodes left in the first season alone, we probably won't get close to the Rebels timeline until season two. And with the live action Ahsoka series coming to Disney Plus in 2023, we can do a little bit of theorizing that there might be some kind of crossover with Sabine, Ezra, and the rest of the crew before we see them on Yavin 4, like we did in Rogue One. Yes, I know it's just the ship, but Chopper was also spotted there, and we all know that droid has an insatiable bloodlust and can't turn down a fight. <laughs> We know what the future holds for the Mothma Mathers LP, but over here at Nerdist, we are so excited to see yet another untold story progress. It's a fresh spin we haven't seen in the Star Wars universe, and I personally cannot wait to see where Mothma, Luthen, Andor, and the rest of the Rebels go from here. But tell us, what do you think? Are you excited for what's to come on Andor? Did I say Mon Mothma correctly every single time? Yes, I did. And do you think we'll get an explanation of the whole Bothans thing? 
What are boffins and where do they come from? Let us know in the comments below and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.